good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all my new and old friends. Welcome. Let's talk about some alchemy, some spiritual alchemy. I'm Cindy Carter. I'm an intuitive, an artist, an energy healer, and a spirit consultant. This series of Alchemy Podcasts each Sunday are about sovereign understandings of life and your role as the one in charge of your life, as, you know, you are the alchemist of your life because you're remembering who you are as divinity. The last podcast, we talked about trusting the plan. Well, it was really about trusting yourself so deeply, to trust your universe so deeply that you empower yourself beyond your known and unknown limitations. That's a big statement right there. But trusting yourself within the divine plan, that's huge. Trust. If you lack trust in the universe, trust in yourself and trust in humanity, Well, you have a very limited view of life. I'm here to help expand your view. So today we're talking about being on the brink. On the brink. Today's podcast has come about about after a week of talking to people on the edge. Not that they're jumping, per se. They're just not walking, not moving into the green, off the brink, into life. So today I'm speaking to those that are suffering or those that are dealing with someone suffering, and that's pretty much all of us. If we don't understand now how to deal with our own suffering, we are never going to be able to allow the suffering of another. If we can't allow the suffering to be transmuted in ourselves, all we're doing is wallowing. So I ask you, are you on the brink? Are you witnessing others on the brink? I think we all are. On the brink of insanity, on the brink of mind control, on the brink of losing the sight of yourself, on the brink of the unknown. But what does it really mean? I mean, so many humans on the earth have now been led to the brink. I, I actually looked up what the brink means because, you know, everybody uses it. Um, but I really wanted to look at, like, what does that, you know, linear human mind think about it? It means being on the edge of the green, on the edge of the green, living or being by a pasture or a vast green space. Oh, my God. You know what? That means that the brink is a good thing. Remember, this is about perception. Changing your perception of perceptions of life changes how you view life, how you deal with life, and how your reality changes. So back yourself up. Change the what you view as the brink. On the brink. It doesn't mean on the brink of death. It's not on the brink of a cliff to jump off of. It's not to a bottomless pit to fling your consciousness into. To give up everything you have left is not to really die, but it's to walk anew, to transmute, to transform onto the green. Imagine a vast green meadow and you're standing in the rough part, the thick, dense part, you know, where all the briars and the stickers and the patches are. Some of you are kind of seeing a golf course right now. That's okay. I like golf. But from the brink is you actually seeing something else. So you've brought yourself to the clearing. You've brought yourself to the edge of your choice, to the vastness of the green. It means you're on the edge of life itself. Creation, recreation is in front of you. You actually see something other than your trauma 
on the brink. You might be aware that there is a choice ahead of you, but it really might look too daunting to you because you've been searching. But you just found yourself on the vastness of the green. It means you're on the edge of life itself. There you go. It's not to lament the past, not to lament all you've suffered or all you've endured. No. I'm not writing my future that way. I'm writing my future by accepting the fullness of my being. Why, while gathering all the parts of me, you know, even the trauma-filled ones, bringing all those parts into the green, into the life itself. So some parts of me may be getting angry, upset, frustrated. Well, I was a bit frustrated this week with the continual choice of suffering that happened in my awareness. And it was for me to deal with immediately in a compassionate way. So I admit I get frustrated with too many phone calls from those that choose victimhood. This week was kind of an overload of victim status on the brink. So I bring all of me to the brink even the frustrated one, and I choose to then see life itself within it, within the frustration, within whatever it is. So if you have lost your sense of identity, choose to see life within your loss of identity. Just choose to see life, to be able to witness from the brink as an accumulation of your understanding and wisdom. Bring all of you to the brink, not just your sufferer. From the fields of a universal view, I see life within my choices. I see life within my suffering. This moves us through the suffering, away from the mire, the density, the briars, the stickers. My God, come out of hiding, because that's what you're doing when you're moving out of the brink. Mm. It's bringing joyous awareness, really, that brought your miserable victim self right here to the brink. You have this awareness within you that's very strong. And it guides you places. And your little victimhood status makes it a certain thing in your mind. You perceive it this way. It's got to be awful. It's got to be oppression. It's got to be terrible. That's all I know. I'm telling you something else right now. You better believe it. There's a universal life force in the green. This is healing, heart-based energy. No, really. Bring the wounded parts of you, the hurt, the miserable, the victim status, the exhausted part of you, to the brink. It's to make the choice of life You know, sometimes you'll say, how did I get here? You suddenly find yourself on the brink of exhaustion, on the brink of, of, uh, you know, unawareness, the brink of non-compassion or judgment. There's a higher dimension of you existing in the green, and maybe you aren't accepting the fact that in your unawareness and beyond your mental capacity for taking in information, there is a universal source and a higher self and a future self that does guide your life. Even if you fight it tooth and nail, you didn't just suddenly appear on the brink. Your feet didn't move you there. You were guided by the light of your own cosmic awareness, of your heart-centered knowingness. Yes, you have that in your unawareness, in your innocence. If you can accept that you have unawareness right now and that within your unawareness is the gift of life, the transmutation of all your suffering, would you not believe then in the mystery of your unawareness? This walk that you took to the brink, to the edge of the green, is really equaling an opportunity of living an eternal life pattern of proliferant life. 
It's right here, beyond the brink, beyond the edge of the briars and stickers and trauma of your past, beyond the comfort zone. It's mystery in life, not a repeat pattern of your suffering. Remember, you're on the brink, on the edge, about to step foot onto the green meadow or stay in the trauma. That's your choice. Step into the vast sunshine. It's filled with wonder, known as beautiful life. You just don't know it. You just haven't seen it, and you don't remember it. Believe me, it's there. But you do have to allow your mental body and your mental mind to align with your heart space. Align with, you know, being with your compassionate best friend and co-creator. Who is that? That's you. All of those. Your compassionate best friend better be you. A version of you. A higher self version of you. Part of God's source. The co-creator. If you want to call it Jesus, Jesua, God, you know, whatever you want. Buddha. Deva. But you have to understand there's no more seeking for the light within you or outside of you. No more seeking light to flood you from outside. And if you're doing that, please stop. That practice of pouring light from above into your body, I'm telling you this is disrupting the entire system of the body-mind-soul structure on a deep cellular level. It's ungrounding the body and the mind and allowing electrical charges to negatively affect your auric field. Instead of bringing light from outside of you into your body, instead, feel into your own heart space. No matter how narrow or wide, no matter how closed or open, and allow the light within you to expand out into your own aura. This activates the God cell within each atom. That is, bringing the universal life force within you out into your everyday dimension, into all the dimensions of you here on earth. That's the divine plan. We are looking for earthly and galactic or cosmic saviors, so please stop petitioning the deities and beings of light to come save you with their light. Stop walking in the light of others and create your own. You're a part of God. That's what this is. Even if you're found on the brink, especially if you're found on the brink, that's when to remember who you are as the flower of God's eye. The, the um, proliferant life of universal source material in your body, activated in an atom when you bring your focus and attention and awareness right to that place. To witness the life of you instead of being mired in the cellular memories, in the traumas, in the mental entanglements, whew, that would be high service. Fifth dimensional consciousness would welcome you to a new thought pattern. One that might catapult you into a whole new life. Some of you are craving and seeking and wanting a new life, but you haven't found it and you can't see it. Yet you do not even know how. And your monkey mind's asking you how to figure it out. Well, that's not your job. But your neediness is getting in the way. No, seriously, some of you are really choosing to suffer. Yes, and I just said that. (laughs) Yes, I just said choosing to suffer. Life is a choice, people, and when you make the compassionate choice to just not want the suffering, to just not want it, to not want the validation of suffering, to not want to be seen in your suffering, to not want to drown in your suffering, by choosing life, I mean, I do talk continuously about choosing life. 
because it's an every moment, every day event that helps you accelerate the energy of the God source or universal life force that lives within you. This is the point of ascension. This is why we came to earth. What you concentrate on is what you get. So are you concentrating too much on what you've lost, what you've not received, what has not come to you, what has been stripped away? Is that accepting the present moment where you don't have any of those things? I think not. I just keep getting these images in my head of little kids that can't find their blankie. You know, your sense of comfort has been left. Maybe you left it in a hotel room, leaving the blankie behind. Well, I'm here to say to you, yay, finally, out of your own comfort zone, this is your true spiritual work. Growing up are we. Maturing the mind are we. Transmuting what is known into the unknown. It may not look like it, but you may not feel like a victor, but you are. You're not a victim. You're a victor. But to finally see yourself in your suffering, to accept the suffering of yourself, this is high service. To truly look at the being known as you. Say, Julia, you know, Julia needs more love, not less love. She needs unconditional acceptance right now in her suffering. So let's not do the mental repetition of what she doesn't have. I'm talking about versions of yourself. If Julia doesn't have the love, you better bring the love to Julia. And I'm talking about Julia being you. If Julia doesn't have love, she doesn't need less love. She needs more love. She needs unconditional acceptance right now in her suffering. This is your job as the alchemist. So let's not do the mental, you know, regurgitation. What of what isn't happening? You know, I don't have this. I don't have that. That's not happening right now. Let's not talk about it. What you need to talk about is what's happening right now. I mean, would you do that to a friend? Would you seriously continue to the hurt, the idea that you lost the blankie? Would you keep like saying that? Oh, my God, you lost the blankie. Would you keep saying that to a, you know, four-year-old? Oh, my God, I can't believe we lost the blankie. That's terrible. What are we going to do about the blankie? Oh, my God, let's wring our hands. Let's cry. Let's huddle together. Let's come together in our sadness. That would be like the worst disservice to any child or adult. That's what we're doing, though. I see all of you doing it every day to yourself. Where has humanity lost compassion for themselves? Why would you treat yourself that way? Once you mature into an understanding that the brink means a new life can be had once you step onto the green, because it's about perception, some children will have a hard time with this transition to being okay without it. Some take longer, but how are you helping this situation? Are you empathizing with the kid? Crying with the child? No. You need to love the child having the blankie gone. And say you're going to be just fine without that blankie. Even if they don't believe it at the time. And assist the child to see a bright future of independence where many new adventures come. Even if the child can't see it. So you kind of have to be your own mother or your own father figure to yourself. It's about time. I mean, it's really beyond time that we treat ourselves as kind and graciously as possible while we go through the darkness that brings us to the brink. I mean, the, the child doesn't know at the time when he's lost his blankie, he doesn't know that he's going to grow into a shining, happy being beyond the place. So step into the one to be the one that already knows it and guide yourself to walk into the green. This is so deep what I'm saying to you. Acceptance of the entire array of beings that you are is like coming to the brink. 
to finally make the decision to no longer be a victim of earth, earthly circumstance, but to remember that you're a co-creator with the universe. So what are you co-creating? We, all of us, all of the sentient life on this planet has a choice to get on board with life. And if you don't, that's fine and your choice. But this choice is like up for everybody. This choice is before us all right now. Accelerated patterns right now. All these past lives are converging in your body. They're looking for space, looking for airtime in the body, your consciousness from afar. Well, are you just going to be the victim of this quantum entanglement? It's like madness. Or are you finally going to sit with yourself and say, okay, no more choices that are not filled in life. No more choices that don't allow me to stay on the brink or wallowing in the darkness of your emotions. Wallowing. I can hear my kids giggling right now. Uh, My adult children don't care for that word, wallowing. I used it a lot. I use it often because I, I see energy. And when we wallow, we're not at peace. When we wallow, we're not in the choice of life. It's really a downward spiral to wallow. But to uplift and decide that the energy needs to move, well, right there is a great starting place. Just decide for yourself that you don't want the suffering. Could you at least do that today? Start there. If you don't like where you are in your mind, in your emotions, then move the energy. You have to be the one. You're the alchemist. This is your crucible. Your body, your mind is the crucible. Let's do the work. Move the energy. And I'm not going to go through the steps of moving energy. That's like elementary stuff. And you can look it up on YouTube. How do you move energy? How do you get out of a bad mood? How do you get out of the monkey mind? How do you meditate? How do you find peace? Just do something. It can be as simple as adoration of a flower. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Hugging a tree. No, seriously. It works. Having an uplifting thought or an uplifting activity, but the thing is to actually do it, to want to do it, to just do it, walk, move, change, transmute. Are you doing any of this? Are you showing up to yourself or are you wallowing in doubt and regret as you stand in the stickers and stand in the brush in the, you know, deep, thick place? On the brink. As some of you can see, I am very blunt. (laughs) I don't have time uh, to mess around here on Earth, and there's a lot of different um, versions of human and their um, accelerated paths. But all of this needs to be looked at, it needs to be emphasized and transformed. You need to change the way you are with yourself, really. Change your day, change your ways, change your thought patterns about yourself. Some of you are very, very mean to yourselves. It's ridiculous how much strife you put yourself through. The meadow of possibilities are strewn with flowers, with heavenly scents, beaming with sunlight and proliferating life all kinds of smells. You could be part of the green. The part of you that knows life itself is the God particle that lives within each cell and that there is a mystery within the green. You are held in complete compassion, understanding, and protection in the green. It's time for you to be the alchemist, the one in charge of this body at this time on this earth right now. You're in charge of your thoughts by accepting the green, by accepting yourself as wholeness as you walk onto the green, as you convince yourself if you have to, as you fake it till you make it. It's a thing. It works. 
If you have to write 1,000 times, I love me, I am worthy of the green, do it. I did it. I did it years ago. I put myself through a self-imposed boot camp of loving myself. It was not an easy thing, as you can imagine, but it must be done for some of us. So write it. Actually take a pen and a paper. Take the time out of your mind to write, I love me. I am worthy of the green. You're convincing your body and mind on many dimensions. It's called kinesthetic learning. The auric field really does work with it. So do this kindly. Do it swiftly or do it slowly. Do it as a boot camp, swift and hard, or do it as a lovely sound meditation bath, whatever. The conscious awareness of you being in charge is there. It's time to be the adult. Please, time to adult up and accept the innocence of yourself the four-year-old version of you that lost the blankie, gather yourself and walk onto the green, into the mystery where you can trust a future not based in your choice of oppression. Let go of the blankie and let's move into the flowering essences of the green where we transform our sadness to joy, where we transform our anger to love, It is really possible if you step up out of the brink into the grace of the green. I was taught how to transform my emotions, my perceptions through my higher self. It was an earthly cosmic wisdom that came to me. So I have a free ebook on my website. It's uh, 10 years of channelings. It's just downloaded. It's called Solene, the Ancient One. It's information that taught me about sovereignty and immortality and ascension. It's coded information that's multi-layered that has a lot of high frequency to it that's beyond your current awareness. It was beyond mine. It was two years beyond my current awareness. But it bled into my cells What I'm telling you now in this transmission is the truth of you. If you want to argue differently, go for it, but not with me. I won't be debating your choice of death or choice of suffering. I'll help you uplift your life. I'm having a workshop in October where people can learn to uplift their lives and the lives of others. I'll be teaching holographic healing. It's a modality of energy healing where we rewire the auric field around the body and we rewire it back into its own life force. It's really powerful work. Uh, The people who've taken the class are quite excited about what they're involved in now. It's suitable for existing energy workers or massage therapists, craniosacral, or really anyone that wants to assist themselves in bringing peace to the body and mind. You can find out more on my website or on Eventbrite. I look forward to our continued talks about alchemy, about remembering ourselves as wholeness, about expanding our being in quantum ways. For those that are on the brink, Please know that you have been led here to make your sovereign 